Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the transport of proteins back from the Golgi to the ER. So we're going to look at Golgi uh, to ER transport. And the fancy name for the Golgi to the endoplasmic reticulum transport is that it's called retrograde transport. Okay. So, uh, the format for this video is that first I'm going to give you the big picture of what we're doing. So we'll have a look at the structure of the cell, we'll have a look at the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi, and different parts of the Golgi, and where uh, these um, vesicles that are going to transport proteins from the Golgi to the ER are going to bud off from. Then what we'll do is uh, we'll look at the... Um, the um, budding process, where you take these vesicles off from the Golgi apparatus, we'll look at their transportation across back to the ER, and uh, then we'll look at how they fuse with the ER membrane. Okay, right, so the big picture then. So, if this is a cell here, okay, then let's draw a few of the organelles. So here's the nucleus here, right, so this is the nucleus. Okay, and then surrounding the nucleus, you have the endoplasmic reticulum here, uh, which we'll abbreviate to ER, but I'll write it out its full name at least once. Uh, so, endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. So, I think we'll colour it in as well. We'll colour it in uh, an orange colour. Okay, so this is the endoplasmic reticulum. Specifically, we're talking about the rough endoplasmic reticulum, uh, which is the one which is to do with um, protein metabolism and protein building. Okay, so this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And if you wanted to abbreviate that, what it would be is R-E-R. -E so you put a little R there to denote the rough, and then E-R to denote endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, then what you'd have is the Golgi apparatus next. So the Golgi is a basically a stack of uh, flattened vesicles. So if you imagine having a, a spherical uh, vesicle and you flatten it out into like a pancake sort of structure, then what you do is you stack many of those flattened structures on top of one another, like so. Okay, and these flattened vesicle structures, those are known as cisternae. Okay, so the singular is a cisterna, uh, but the plural is cisterni. And generally, in uh, the Golgi apparatus, you have several, um, well, around seven um, cisterni. So let's draw seven. So there's five, six, and then finally seven. Okay, so let's outline this in a certain colour. So we'll outline it, I believe, in turquoise. Okay, so one... Uh, they're probably just going to have to be coloured in rather than outlined. Okay, so there's the Golgi apparatus here. Uh, so the whole thing is the Golgi. Or the Golgi apparatus. Golgi. Or occasionally it's called the Golgi body. But we'll use Golgi apparatus, or we'll just refer to it as the Golgi. Right, so the Golgi has different portions. So this portion of the Golgi that's closest to the endoplasmic reticulum, this is known as the cis Golgi. So this here is the cis Golgi. And the portion of the Golgi that's furthest away from the endoplasmic reticulum, this bit over here, this is known as the trans Golgi. Okay, so cis means uh, on the same side as, so it's the portion of the Golgi that's near to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, whereas the trans, trans means on the opposite side of, so it's the portion of the Golgi that's far away from the endoplasmic reticulum. Then the bit in the middle here, this is known as the medial Golgi, so the middle Golgi. Okay. So medial, cis, Golgi, medial, Golgi, and then trans, Golgi. Right, okay, so what are we looking at? We are looking at Golgi to ER, or retrograde transport, which basically means taking proteins from this cis, Golgi, this portion that's closest to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, taking them from there and transporting them back to the endoplasmic reticulum. And the way you do it is you create little vesicles 
uh, which are going to bud off from the cis Golgi, which are then going to be transported along microtubules back to the endoplasmic reticulum, where they will fuse with the endoplasmic reticulum membrane and uh, release the protein into the endoplasmic reticulum. So these vesicles have a special name. They are known as COP1 coated vesicles. So COP1 coated vesicles. Now COP stands for coat protein complex 1. So COP1 equals coat protein complex 1. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, what we'll begin with now, now that we've had this big overview, what we'll start with is we'll start with um, looking at what sort of proteins you can take from the cis Golgi, because there are two general types. Uh, there are luminal proteins and there are membrane proteins. So proteins uh, which are actually in the membrane of the Golgi, of the cis Golgi, and proteins that are just in the lumen of the cis Golgi. And you want ways of transporting both of them back to the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so we'll begin with that process then. Right, so we'll begin with luminal proteins. Uh, so let's say we have um, the membrane of the uh, cis Golgi here. Okay, and we'll have it in turquoise here. So this is the membrane of the cis Golgi here. Okay, so what we now want to do is we want to see how to transport proteins back from the cis Golgi to the ER. So we'll start with luminal proteins first, because luminal proteins are slightly better understood uh, than um, membrane proteins. Okay, so if a protein, let's say, uh, we'll draw it here, this is the polypeptide folded up into some funny shape. If a protein needs to be transported, which is in the lumen of the cis Golgi, needs to be transported back to the uh, ER, and we'll say the ER membrane is over here in orange, then basically what it will have is a specific uh, sequence of amino acids in it which tells uh, the Golgi that it needs to go to the ER. Okay, and this specific sequence of amino acids is known as the KDEL sequence. K-D-E-L, okay? And the reason it's known as the KDEL sequence is because K-D-E-L are the single letter amino acid codes uh, for the amino acids that you have in this sequence, basically. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.